Welcome back. You're listening to Get Real with Bob and Stacy. You're joining us for our Leaders and Legends segment. And today we have two very special guests in the studio with us, the McLaughlin team of Lair Realty Partners, Matt and Nayana. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Thank for, you having for having us. us. And we also have a new co-host with us today, Job Torini. Good morning, uh, Bob. How, how are you? How you doing? How you doing, Job? Good to have you on. Fantastic. So we're going to get right into it today. Uh, Matt and Nayana just joined uh, Lair Realty Partners within the last six months. They used to be independent uh, real estate investors and consultants, and we invited them on the show today to kind of talk about how they're going to build their business. Uh, why don't we open up by kind of talking about the the business to business series that you're about to launch? Oh, first of all, thank you. Would like to thank uh, Ross Mortgage for uh, allowing us this opportunity to come down today and talk about our business. And obviously, would like to thank uh, thank Stacy Alcorn for offering us such a tremendous opportunity to join uh, her team. Uh, we are taking a little bit of a different approach uh, to marketing, I think, than some of the other teams. Uh, the traditional teams, I should say, mm -hmm. we are actually committed to reaching out and you know doing some door knocking, some of the old classic things that you see. Uh, for example, uh, the Century 21 model back when I was growing up. I got to say, I didn't like the color of the coats, but I really <laughs> loved the commercials. You'd mm -hmm. see them in coffee shops, you'd see them in neighborhoods, talking to people, and really being that community-based. Uh, sales agent or realtor. Mm -hmm. So it's something that, that uh, I grew up watching, something that over the years in different sales jobs uh, that I've had that was essential, whether it was a business-to-business -business sale or business-to-consumer sale, that the bottom line is you really you can't get business unless you ask people for their business. Mm -hmm. So, you know, over the years that it transitioned into these media, social media and emails and then just direct mail, you lose the personal touch. Right. So we've started in January. Every nice, every nice weekend day, we've been out knocking on doors, providing some information, introducing ourselves. Uh, you know, in the town of Andover, which is our, you know, our neighboring community, um, and it's been uh, it's been going pretty well. Mm. We're getting a lot of feedback, getting a lot of, uh, you know, recognition in town, and getting to know our neighbors. Excellent, yeah. excellent. That's a good way to get started. Uh, now, can you talk a little bit about that ser the business of business series that I mentioned? I, I saw the promo that you guys launched this week. The video was awesome. I'm really looking forward to seeing it coming out. Can you kind of talk about what you're going to cover in that series? Absolutely. That's a, an idea that actually was uh, that came up uh, from my wife, who's sitting over there quietly, <laughs> trying to get her engaged here. But this Thank is you for this trying, honey. this is actually you know an idea that she came up with that uh, I thought was fantastic. And it falls right in line with, uh, you know, what, what, what Stacy and the Lair Group does. I mean, we're building local businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, we're trying to keep that direct connection to, to our constituents without feel, having that big corporate feel. Excellent. So we're trying to promote local business. You know, we want to make sure that the people in the communities that these businesses serve know, know the background. I mean, right. everybody has a compelling story. So... We started knocking on some business doors, and, and people were excited to, to, to join us and, you know, allow us to promote them. And in turn, in good faith, they would be promoting us back to their, to their customers. So it's been, a, right. it's, been a, it's been fun. We've been doing it for a few weeks. We've got a couple of people that uh, we're ready to launch with, I think, tomorrow. Nyan has mm -hmm. been doing, been editing late into the night, <laughs> <laughs> getting things done. But uh, yeah, that's going to launch tomorrow. We're very, very, very excited about it. Our first guest is... Uh, uh, Donnie McLaren Jr. He's the co-owner of Wamaset Lanes, and a new company called Escapeology in Tewksbury. Uh, two huge entertainment centers right in the mm. Merrimack Valley. Uh, and through our community, through, through walking around the town of Andover, one of the things that we've been getting back feedback from people is things to do for young kids in the Andover community. The high school, uh, the junior high, high school level kids, they really kind of hang out at the burger shop downtown, and parents are wondering what they can do. So. By reaching out to Donnie, we are going to be now promoting them and connecting them with some of the Andover moms mm -hmm. and seeing what they can do for some after-school things for Andover, uh, for the uh, kids in Andover. That's so, excellent. Yeah. Excellent. That, Joe, that ties in a lot to what you're always saying, you know, supporting local business as opposed to business on a national scale. Yeah, I mean, I think you can see that work in several different communities. It's, a, it's, it's more common now than you've seen before. And, and along those lines, I mean, both of you have owned successful local businesses before. 
coming into this business knowing you had several options, what does what made Lair the choice for you in terms of building your local business there as opposed to say a national brand? I think the culture, uh, the the culture sure. at Lair is they allow you to grow. She promotes, or the the whole company, you know, from our leader Stacy promotes entrepreneurship outside the box thinking you know, someone like me just to be frank i'm not someone that's good in a a caged environment mm-hmm. uh, you know i need to some freedom to grow and i need a structure to keep me you know in line mm-hmm. so it seems to, it, it works out it works out just perfectly for us i mean the resources the training i mean i we we looked for months and months and months to find the right home for us. We knew we had a specific set of skills Mm -hmm. and we needed to find the right place to land to grow those skills, to help, to help the company grow, to help us grow both professionally and personally. We met with a couple of, a couple of people. And, uh, I think Stacy was the third or fourth person that we had sat down with. And she came, uh, referred to us by a mutual friend. And boy, I tell you in the first two minutes, uh, that we spoke to Stacy, I already knew, and I was hoping that Niana was feeling the same thing I was feeling that we found a home. I mean, this Absolutely. is a place that we're going to be for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, I mean, we got married in Disney World. She did a she did a a, a nice little thing on Walt Disney, and mm-hmm. you know, she you know, the support, the, the fact that that our that our uh, symbol is a lion. You know, our first bulldog's name was Mufasa. Mm. So I mean, we are huge Disney people. <laughs> yeah. It was a sign. So, it was yeah. a, it was for a us sign. To be there. Yeah. <laughs> so everything kind of fell into place. Everything, yes. everything. Excellent. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. I mean, and one of the things that uh, you know I've been able to to work with Matt and Nyan on is really how to build their local business and getting feedback from them on how they've built the former businesses that they had that were very successful mm. and how we can use some of those common practices right here at Ross with what we do. Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, I think some of the unique things that could probably expand some of the way that local business owners feel about things is that, you know, this team, this business understands that even though they're local, they have to do local things and the social media things that are required for any large business. It's easy to distinguish yourself from a national brand as a small local company, but to get that message out, sometimes you have to use the same methods of communication. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think will distinguish this team is that they're building out organically their social media path and presence. And that's, you build out 12, 14,000, 16,000 organic views to your site. You're you're a common business. You're a local business that people are recognizing. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, what they already understand that maybe not everybody does that. Just because some business has a large presence now, a year from now, that presence can change. And it's, it's, it, that can happen faster than ever with social media. Right, right. Excellent point. Uh, why don't we talk a little bit about your value adds to, to buyers in the marketplace? It's, sell, selling real estate, everybody has their approach. There mm-hmm. seems to be a standard. You know, you get the house, you take your, your photos, your videos, you upload them onto your MLS, your Zillow's, your Realtor.com, Redfin, Truly, all, all, you know, all the sites. Mm-hmm. And, it, and there's literally thousands of homes that are listed every year. So I think that the trick for every you know, good sales agent is to find out how to weed your way through all the noise. Right. What makes your listing stand out? Mm-hmm. So you have to do those standard things. And I think that what we found over the years, even selling our own properties and utilizing other realtors, is that, geez, it seemed like it was a set it and forget it mentality. You came in, you met with us, we liked you, we liked your approach, and then the activity was an open house, and then you know our stuff is just floating out there with the hundreds of others. What made us unique? So we looked at, obviously, the, the crux of sales is you want as many people interested in the property bidding on your property as possible so that you can try and push that envelope and get as much money back for your investment as you can. Mm-hmm. That's what our duty is as agents, right. to get our clients the most money in the shortest amount of time possible. Mm-hmm. I mean, people won't want to be, have their house on the market for month after month. It's disruptive. It prohibits you from moving on with your life. It's not just a dollars and cents transaction. It's a it's a an emotional sale as well. I mean, people have their you know memory after memory after memory in these homes. So, 
we try to figure out a way to capture all that and make it a little bit unique. So that's kind of our, our when, we, when we approach something, we're looking at it through that type of uh, those lenses. The step that we take additionally is that we will actually actively go out and call the top agents, top brokers, top agents, salespeople in the area and drive them towards your listing. Most people will just send you an email and, you know, I, I don't know about other agents, but when we get dozens and dozens and dozens of emails and it gets lost in the noise, mm -hmm. our direct approach says, hey, I sent you an email earlier. Our MLS number is XYZ. You know, take a peek at it. We've got, you know, we've got a motivated buyer. The place has these, you know, these two or three key features. Maybe you have someone you're interested in. And we call. We call them to drive the traffic and alert people directly that we have this unbelievable product that they should bring their buyers over to come and see. Mm -hmm. Just an extra step. Right. Okay, so uh, we're hoping that that approach, you know, gets that time limit, gets the, gets the amount of time that the house is on the market. It's the shortest amount of time possible. Drive people there and drive the interest up so that, you know, it's a commodity that people want. It's, right. it's something that they want. So you drive the price up, too. Yeah. That's that's the hope. The more more that's people the you get there, the more the price goes up, right? That, yeah. That's the hope. Again, yeah. it's you know, it's our job is to get the most money for that house for our clients that we possibly can. And mm -hmm. if you're not actively trying to do that for your clients, then you're not representing your clients mm -hmm. appropriately. Absolutely. That's just our philosophy. And I don't mean that negatively to anybody else, believe, believe me, but mm -hmm. just for our own personal goals and objectives. That's the approach that we take, and that's kind of our, our, our philosophy. Excellent. So why don't we talk about the real estate market in general? So everybody's probably heard the horror stories. You go out to make an offer on the property. You find out you're one of 10, 20. I'm even hearing 40 and 45 offers on places now. Uh, what's your experience in the marketplace, and where do you think it's headed? Well, we're watching interest rates rise, mm -hmm. which generally is an indicator. You know, sometimes it it puts a little panic in people wondering if they're going to be able to move their property now that the cost of the house is actually going up. Uh, so we're, we're expecting, you know, this time of year, things really pick up anyway. The spring, right. summer, always great times, you know, to list homes. But I think the interest rate is a, is a big factor right now. I think that there's uncertainty over the new tax laws, the fact that people can no longer rely on uh, the, the interest, the, the deduction for their mortgage interest is a key factor now for mm -hmm. people. I mean, does it does it take you from buying a, a six hundred thousand dollar home and does it bring you down to the five seventy five rate? Does mm -hmm. it make you know five seventy five down to five fifty? What is that adjustment going to be when people look and say, hmm, I get this tax credit with the new tax credit, but I'm losing X. If I'm carrying a mortgage of, you know, five hundred thousand or more, what's how's that going to affect me towards the end of the year? So mm -hmm. I think that's starting to to resonate with people. I've had a lot of discussions with homeowners. That seems to be what they're talking about. As we're out knocking doors in the neighborhood, those are the questions that are coming up. What do you see coming down the road with the interest rates? I said, well, it's been pretty clear that they're going to bump them again. Mm -hmm. They've been announced that, and I think that they predicted the next three rounds they're going to bump them. Mm -hmm. That's what they came to be saying. Please correct me if I'm wrong. but. And that's something that, uh, that people have to look at, especially people that are buyers, that you're putting your budget together today. You have to figure, you know, you're, you're more that pretend, you know, see if you're, if you're pre-qualified for $350,000, what's that going to mean to you if the interest rate bumps up another half a percent in four months? Right. You know, does that whack your budget out? Do you have play in your budget? And from a homeowner's perspective, if I'm trying to sell my home, if the funnel gets smaller of people that are qualified or even capable of paying a mortgage to buy my home, I've got to start thinking about maybe this is the time now so they can be locked in low and get rid of the house now. So I think that's the mentality where, where people are heading. Right. And you can feel the pressure coming up. You know, as we started knocking in January, and everybody was just getting over the holidays, kind of interesting. What are you weirdos doing here? It's January 15th. <laughs> you know, it's still winter. Yeah. Like, well, it's 50 degrees out. We're going to come out and say hi to you. So yeah. it was interesting. But this as February, they raised the rates in what? February, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we... Towards the end of February and these last few weeks, people have asked, do you think they're going to move them up again? And I said, I think it's a certainty. Mm -hmm. They've announced that they're going to. And you kind of leave that little nugget in their head and yeah. hope that they call you back and say, hey, get this thing off my hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So we're talking with uh, the McLaughlin team, Matthew and Nayana. 
Uh, let's give out your contact info for anybody that's looking to buy or sell pretty much anywhere in in and around Andover. That's where you're covering right now? or Yeah, we cover the Merrimack Valley. Merrimack right? Valley. Yeah, okay. we cover the, the entire Merrimack Valley. Right now we are focusing, because we're knocking on doors, we, you know, to make it impactful. Mm-hmm. We're, you know, we're starting in one section of, the, of uh, the Andover community and we're walking through and we figure in the next I don't know, eight to ten weeks we'll be through there and then we're going to do some some activity in the North Tewksbury area, the Belvedere area, Lowell, North, North Andover. We're going to start mm-hmm. expanding out. But right now we're just, you know, concentrating on, on the one area for our resources. You know? Right, right. As we grow as a team and get bigger, you know, we'll have a bigger footprint and we'll be able to do more. But for now, just kind of keeping it concentrated. And what's the best way to contact you? Best way to contact us right now is we, we actually give out, I give out my cell phone directly. So you can text or call me at 508-826-2778. And let's give the number one more time. It is 508-826-2778. Eight two six two seven seven eight. That's my my uh, direct cell phone, and you can text or call me anytime, day or night. Excellent. So we've only got about a minute left. Uh, I just have one last quick question for you. You you and Nayana have done some. I'm house actually flipping. I'm actually married, Bob. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you got me on that one. <laughs> so house flipping. You, you guys you guys have done some house flipping in the past. Yes, sir. <laughs> what are you, what are your thoughts on where that's going right now? Because it's all the rage. Like everybody thinks they can flip houses. What's your thoughts? Well, I mean, we got into it uh, a long time ago. I always tell people that uh, before uh, Christina L. Musa and Tariq L. Musa, it was Nyanna mm-hmm. and Matt. We were doing <laughs> it up here a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, we never got famous. But uh, it's, 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 a, it's a great field. But it's not something you should go into if you don't have experience. If you don't have any construction background, you don't have any investment, you need to speak to someone that knows what they're what they're doing. Mm-hmm. You can get into these houses. Most of them are sight unseen. If it's a, if it's an auction, you have to come up with the money up front. You have to be able to, you know, if you don't have cash, mm-hmm. you have to make sure that this house that you can't see is mortgageable. Right. And that's very difficult to do if you can't get inside it. And, you know, oftentimes those houses that are in distress, they fall under some destruction and, they, you know, they're not kept well because there's financial issues there. There's emotions, there's money. So, Sometimes you fall into the great unknown. So I recommend caution. We've done very well. We've been mm-hmm. able to, to make a living doing it, and we've been fortunate. But I think the success rate in doing that is even slimmer than that of being a real estate agent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, because it's, you have the, to know what you're doing. Yeah. Because yeah. if you look now, if you look at the inventory now of partially finished homes that have been purchased either through short sale or foreclosure— because people bit off way more than they can chew. Mm-hmm. I think I see more of those on the market now than I do just the straight REOs or bank owns because the inventory is shrinking there. Right, right. The last two or three houses that we looked at with a client were all partially finished. I walked into a, a, a four, it was a four family up in Fitchburg. And I'm walking around scratching my head saying, well, I only see two apartments here. <laughs> they tore out the staircases because they probably didn't want to have to put in the fire suppression systems that mm-hmm. are required with four families and more. I mean, there's a lot of regulations to look at. And all of a sudden, like, okay, that's an extra 10 grand. Then I have to put the staircase back in. Oh, there's another 15 grand. So I'm telling, we're talking to clients like, you got yeah. 40000 bucks before you buy this house to bring it back up to co where they're going to give you an occupancy permit. Yeah. Really? I'm like, Oh yeah, really. Uh, that's something you need to know <laughs> really, before you, you buy. Really, you need to right? know that yeah. because where are you going to come up with an extra forty grand? Yeah, you know? yeah that's so. a good point. Good point. So we're we're just about out of time. I wanted to thank you both for joining us. Uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back with more. Get real after this. 